Let's talk about an intestinal disorder, which is dysentery. So dysentery is a disease or infectious disease uh, caused by two types of, uh, like one type of bacteria, and that is Shigella. And the dysentery, which is caused by Shigella bacteria, it's called Shigellosis. And another protozoa is known as Anthamoeba histolytica. So these uh, actually um, is known as amoebic dysentery and bacillary dysentery. So dysentery is an uh, infectious disease of intestines that uh, lead diarrhea with uh, mucus and blood stool. So what are the symptoms of dysentery? So if you see that the dysentery is like in case of bacillary dysentery, and amoebic dysentery. Bacillary dysentery can be like the incubation period can be one to three days or even four days and it depends a person to person but one to three days. So the symptoms of bacillary dysentery which is called like the bacillus like uh, Shigella and this is diarrhea with belly cramps. The symptoms is a belly cramps is very much prominent in case of bacillary dysentery. Fever is a common symptoms in both cases. Nausea and vomiting would be the another symptoms of a bacillary dysentery. Blood or mucus stool. So this is a very important that blood or mucus stool is another symptoms which is the most prominent symptoms in, in case of dysentery. So in case of bacillary dysentery these are the common symptoms and if you see in amoebic dysentery the incubation period can be two to four weeks sometimes it's a mild symptoms that is not noticeable but after when the dehydrations get worse then you see the nausea diarrhea belly cramps weight loss and fever is the main symptoms of the amoebic dysentery so why dysentery is divided into amoebic and bacillary so bacillary means you no know, bacteria so the shigella is genus shigella this bacteria caused the bacillary dysentery and this is antimoeba histolytica amoebic so you see the preventions when uh, a person get infected when a person get infected through shigellosis or amoebic dysentery that what can be the procedure that he can or she can relieve definitely medical doctors prescriptions and doctors advice is necessary but before that there are some preventions that we must care about it and this is a hygienic issue this is lifestyle issue and this is something very common that a person's uh, from any 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 corner of the world can be the most vital issues like hygienic personal hygiene so you see the first thing that we can prevent days entry is drinking pure water pure water is going to be another crisis for the next upcoming world because um, we need to know the the value of a pure drinking water we should not waste water we should we should value that uh, the pure drinking water and we need to encourage people to drink pure water if we want to prevent a dysentery or intestinal disorder so this is number one number two is that wash fruits and vegetables carefully so each and every houses that mothers and the cookers those are actually uh, cooking food for us they must be very careful they need to wash vegetables they need to wash fruits before eating because it's all about hygienic issue and this is all about uh, depending on habits or how a person can lead their own life so at first drinking pure water can be a good prevention then washing fruits and vegetables before cooking and eating Number three is washing hands with soap properly after using toilets. So this is worldwide use in case of hygienic uh, awareness we love like peoples from everywhere and we can see that yes you wash hands with soap is very important even uh, after after using the toilets and of course before eating. So this is a good habit that everyone should be aware of. So washing hands with soap and then using sanitary latrines. This is very, very important. Low income communities or low income groups where sanitation is not in a good shape, they might be at risk of developing this intestinal disorder like dysentery where the good hygienic practice is absent, where good sanitation practice is absent, where there is a lack of 
good sanitations, these peoples are at risk to develop this sort of intestinal disorder. So using sanitary latrines is one of the key factors of preventing dysentery. Washing utensils carefully, those utensils like the, the, the materials that we use regularly in our day-to-day -day life, that should, be, that should be washed properly, that should be cleaned properly so that the personal hygiene is developed and people would be, uh, would be safe from dysentery. So right now what you can see that in case of dysentery, that this is this is caused by bacteria and protozoa. The bacteria's name is Shigella, and then the disease is known as Shigellosis. On the other hand, the the protozoa is named as uh, the Entamoeba histolytica, and this is amoebic dysentery. So we know the symptoms and we know the preventions. And of course, one thing is important that what is written on your book, you might uh, go for Google for more understanding. I'm just giving you a limit. Uh, a small descriptions regarding this entry because I need to cover up the whole syllabus and this is the sequences of the previous classes that I'm going to explain it so the, my, my main focus of this chapter is to understand the digestion process as this is the intestinal disorder uh, so this entry is the first lecture and second I'm coming up with uh, peptic and gastric ulcer, constipation, uh, appendicitis and diarrhea. So m next four diseases will be explained in the next four tutorials. So I hope you understand this entry and if you don't uh, know or you feel any sort of uh, problems regarding understanding my any topic, do write me know in the comment section so I can adjust with your requirements. So take care, stay well, bye.